Yo, what's going on guys? I bring to you the MSI Supreme X RTX 3090 Ti. Now, as you can see, and as you probably already know, this is a massive three-slot cooler. With uh, many heat pipes, vast array of aluminum fins to help aid in cooling. And there's a new 16-pin PCI Express power connector which is going to be uh, compatible with new power supplies coming out soon, hopefully soon. It's the three massive fans. And for I.O., we have three display ports and one HDMI with some venting uh, for the cooling there. And then, of course, this does have a uh, SLI connector, which it's kind of useless these days, but it's there in case you want to go SLI. But, uh, and then by default, it's set to the silent BIOS, but I have it on the gaming BIOS because you get better uh, um, temperatures at the, on the gaming BIOS. So I would recommend keeping it on the gaming and don't keep it on silent because your temperatures will be a lot higher. Moving on to the backplate, also a brushed aluminum. Nice finish. There's the rear of the GPU. And then this lights up, which uh, you could customize the RGB, what, uh, what color you want to have it light up. But I'll show that uh, once I get it installed. And I guess that's about it for the cooler. But it's massive, as you can see. There's another angle here. And more of the fans and fins. Okay, so I'm going to get this installed in my new build, which is an i9-2900KS uh, CPU with a MSI Z690 uh, Unified motherboard and 30 gigabytes of G-Skill 32, um, I'm sorry, G-Skill uh, DDR5 memory. So I'm going to get this installed. Well, we'll set up RGB and uh, we'll get everything uh, set up. And uh, oh, one thing I want to mention, this has a higher power limit. Uh, compared to some of the other 3090 Ti's, this has a 480 watt power limit and a 1950 MHz uh, boost clock. And this is the overclock model, so it's pretty much the top line uh, MSI uh, 3090 Ti. Or, I almost called it the I used to have a 3090 Ti for the Win 3, so I almost called it that. But yeah, MSI uh, Supreme X uh, 3090 Ti. Alright, so let's get this installed and then uh, we'll do benchmarks, we'll do running, we'll run some gaming tests, and we'll test overclocking and temperatures memory temperatures and maybe briefly we'll go over mining even though no one's really going to be doing that for a while at least until things improve all right so we'll get this installed and we'll take things from there but here it is msi supreme x 3090 ti massive graphics card quite a beast Okay, so I got the MSI Supreme X 3090 Ti installed, and I got the RGB customized to blue to match the rest of my rig and case fans. And here's the lighting of the card. There's some on the fans. On the rear, got the dragon there, which I mentioned earlier. Shot the heat pipes. And so the rig is, uh, First off, the case is a Corsair Obsidian 1000D, a super tower case. Got lots of uh, case fans, uh, a Corsair H170IE like LCD uh, AIO with a 420mm radiator. But I uh, got lots of fans, lots of cooling, and the motherboard is a MSI Z690 Unify. It's got no RGB, which is fine because I have so many different things that are RGB lit, like the RAM, of course the I.O., the graphics card, so it really doesn't make any difference. So those of you who are worried about getting a motherboard with no RGB, there's really no issue because these days all the other components can be RGB lit. And I, like I said, I'd like to customize it to blue, it's your favorite color. And then the processor is an i9 12900KS. And usually when I'm benchmarking, I overclock the 5.3 gigahertz, all, over, all, all, all core overclock. And then RAM to 16 gigabytes of DDR5, 6400 uh, G-Skill, uh, Trident Z 
Korean, dual rank, and again with RGB. And I don't know if I can get a shot of the timings here. It's, but the timings are pretty decent. Maybe see it, maybe not. But uh, pretty decent for DDR5. And then powering all this is the EVGA 1300 uh, EVGA Supernova 1300 watt uh, power supply, which is more than sufficient to power these cards. And then once uh, power supply manufacturers release this uh, 1610 uh, 3.0 connector power connector, I'll be upgrading to that. That way, I don't have to deal with this rat's nest of uh, cables when running uh, one of these newer cards or RTX 40 series cards, which are absolutely going to be featuring this new uh, power connector with extremely high power elements and uh, all that good stuff. So we'll, we'll uh, hold on until then, but I will definitely upgrade the power supply even before then, just so I can at least power this card properly and get uh, better, uh, better voltage uh, loads. I guess it has this thing where it would a card could pull a little bit more power than your power supply can make and I bet I guess these new power supplies are able to basically create more power and keep things uh, more level and uh, stable so I guess that's what we need I guess we'll see we'll see how, how much it makes makes a difference in all uh, these higher power graphs cards okay so we're gonna do benchmarks we're gonna do time spy port royal and uh, we'll overclock this card and we will overclock the CPU, the 5.3 GHz overclock, and then I will show the CPU-Z stats, and then we'll take the hand there. So I will uh, continue this video on the computer, and we'll do the overclocks, and then we'll run to the benchmarks, and we'll see how this card performs. But there she is, MSI Supreme X3090 Ti. Massive 3 sot cooler. And uh, we'll see how she performs. Stay tuned. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be testing the MSI Supreme X 39Ti, so we're, do, we're going to do time spy uh, 3D mark test first, and then uh, these are overclock settings. Uh, there's no way to raise the power limit because it's basically set at 480 watts, and so it just hides it goes 100%, and there's really no way to adjust it, so it's kind of different uh, compared to EVGA where you can raise it to like, I think 106%. So there's one little difference there compared to the EVGA card. Okay, so core clock, an additional 140 megahertz, and memory, an additional 1431 megahertz, and in GPU-Z, that puts the boost clock at 2090. In real, real world, it's usually around 2160, to a little bit higher, and then memory, 1492 megahertz, and memory bandwidth of 1145.9. Uh, and recyclable bar, recyclable bar is enabled. And this is on Windows 11 with all the updates and everything, you know, basically motherboard drivers, motherboard uh, BIOS, everything updated to the latest and greatest. So I'm gonna run the test. I'm gonna show the card, see if there's any coil line, and show the low temperature, so stay tuned. Okay, currently running port royal. We're at 2145 megahertz uh, clock. Temperatures are at 65C and uh, slowly rising. I do have the fan set to auto, so obviously the temperatures are going to be a little bit higher than someone who customizes their fan curve. Right now I'm just going to leave it at auto default just to see uh, where everything sits. So we're pushing about 453 watts, 68C load temperatures. Uh, there is a little bit of coil line, nothing too drastic, but it is noticeable. So just wanted to mention that there is a little bit of coil line, which the EVGA 4113 39 yeah, did not have. But overall, we're sitting at 69C, 2130 megahertz uh, clock, and uh, not too bad. Pretty uh, decent uh, clocks and decent temperatures. Okay, so here's the time spy results of the MSI Supreme X39 Ti. So, time spy score 20,531, graphics score 22,685, and a CPU score of 21,698. And uh, again, this is with this overclock settings on the GPU. And then the i9-2900KS was at a 5.3 GHz all-core overclock with 16 or 32 gigabytes of G-Skill uh, DDR5 uh, PC64 uh, RAM. Okay, so next we will test uh, Port Royal and then we'll see how uh, that does in, at the test. Okay, so we're testing Port Royal. Briefly, it was at uh, 2130 megahertz, but it slowly has gone down. And this test is longer, so it's going to better test uh, the temperatures under load. 
and they're pulling, let's see, 481 watts. It just said 43 a minute, or there we go, 485. And as for coil line, it's about the same as before. It's a little bit, there's little hints of coil line, but nothing too drastic. I mean, this was the case open, so it's nothing too uh, out of the ordinary. Now we've gotten up to 70C. This is again of the fan at auto. I purposely set it at auto because I wanted to kind of test real well how the temperatures are without having to modify the fan settings. And so uh, after this test, I will also show you the memory temperatures in uh, GPU-Z because I do have it running in the background to uh, just to show you the memory temperatures uh, under load with this card. So I will let this test finish and then we'll show the results and then I'll show the memory temperatures afterwards. So stay tuned. So far, so good. Pretty uh, decent uh, temperatures. The noise is fine, not really much uh, fan noise. The manual. And again, we're sitting at around 2150, 2115 to 2100 megahertz. Uh, and pulling about 475 to 480 watts. Okay, so I've just finished the test on port royal. And the memory looks like it got up to about 78C was the highest it went. And a GPU clock set around 2130 as the highest as it went. And it kind of leveled out between 2115 and 2100. And everything else was pretty standard. 70, looks like it almost reached 71C. And uh, yeah, so that's where that was. Okay, so Port Royal score is 15,041. So pretty standard, uh, decent. And again, that was uh, with these clock settings. I had to lower the uh, GPU clock just a few megahertz. I think originally it was at 1700, so just for Port Royal, I had to lower it just slightly. And again, the i9 2900K, that's that 5.3 year. So pretty standard uh, and decent. Okay, so that wraps up all the results of the Supreme X uh, 3090 Ti by MSI. And overall, it's a very solid card. Cool running. Coil line is a little bit noticeable, but nothing too drastic. I've had Asus cards that were a lot louder. Uh, one thing to note, when I first got this card, it did have a uh, louder coil line, but after I ran some tests, did some gaming, you know, ran 3D Mark, a few times, played some games, like Cyberpunk, messed around with overclocks, it seems like it gotten quieter. So as you saw in the video, there was some coil line, but nothing too drastic. So overall, solid card. Uh, I definitely appreciate the higher power limit. It seems like this holds a little bit higher clocks than the 4 to one three. Now, of course, every card is different. You know, not every card is overclocked to the same level. My uh, EVDA card, um, it would usually only get to about 2115 to 2130 tops. And this one seems to get a little bit higher, 2160, as high as I saw it go. And temperatures are pretty much close. Uh, for some reason, I think the EVDA is about equal to this in temperatures. And memory temperatures are also about the same. I saw the highest memory temperatures on this under gaming load, not just 3D Mark. Of, uh, I think it was 77C, and that was with a max overclock. So, uh, pretty standard, uh, you know, low temperatures for the memory, thanks to the one sided memory on the 3090s, which definitely helps out with the temperatures. And so, uh, as for the lighting, it's very significant. There's lots of lighting front, bottom, and back. So, I definitely uh, can appreciate that because my motherboard has no RGB. So, with everything else, not lit up, where everything, everything else that is lit up, it does help out, uh, help uh, brighten everything up. So, you know, all the case fans, and even my SSDs, uh, Western Digital uh, SN850s, which got three of them running, uh, they do have a little bit of RGB there, as you can see, which I also customized to blue. I got a RAID O set up, and uh, there's one extra one terabyte at the bottom, which you can see there, but it's just my backup drive. So overall, solid card. I give it four out of five. Uh, very, uh, I got it for an excellent price. I know when these came out, I believe they're around twenty three hundred dollars. I got this brand new sealed, factory sealed for eleven hundred dollars. I couldn't believe it. It was an awesome deal. I couldn't, couldn't uh, resist. And now I did sell my EVGA for the one three thirty nine Ti uh, for a lot more because I sold it before the whole GP market went crazy. I kind of did it as a smart move. And then I, I just saw this for eleven hundred dollars, brand new sealed. And then I saw how Nvidia is now delaying their cards, and I wanted to still game, so I figured, hey, let's just get this. I made one an EVGA card. I'll keep this no matter what. Figuring eleven hundred dollars for a thirty nine Ti, 
you can't really beat that in, in any market today. So I'll keep this and keep it as a future backup card. And uh, that's for when the 4080, 4090, 4090 Ti come out. We will all see and we'll see how they perform. So thanks for watching. I appreciate the support. Uh, may the best be with you all. Stay positive in life. Keep doing what you're doing. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave me one. And as for the gaming tests, I didn't do the gaming tests because I noticed in my previous reviews of, say, the EVGA 3090 Ti, a lot of people said they didn't even watch the gaming tests. They just mainly wanted to see the overclock uh, settings, benchmarks, and uh, memory temperatures, which is what I basically covered in the review. So I didn't want to make it look like I'm half-assing this review, but I just wanted to say I, it's going to be obviously a little bit higher because now I'm running an i9 2900, uh, 2900KS CPU compared to the AMD Ryzen 9. 5950X CPU, so obviously I'm gonna assume with this CPU at all core 5.3 gigahertz overclock, it's probably gonna probably put a maybe about a five to eight percent higher uh, frames per second in gaming, depending on you know which game you're testing and resolution uh, is used. But uh, overall, solid card, very happy with it, and thanks for watching. Appreciate the support, and uh, may the best be with you all. Peace out. Lose the brakes, signing out, and see you guys for the next video. Peace out.